Hi there and welcome to this video on achieving cross-platform code coverage with Catch2. Here we've got an example of the output of what we're trying to achieve here. So this is a coverage report giving us statement coverage, branch coverage and MCDC coverage. And in this video I'm going to show you the steps that I took to get to this point. So let's take a look at my code and my tests. And in this video, I'm using Visual Studio Code. So I've got a, a very simple Blinky project here, and I've got some tests uh, using the Catch2 unit test framework. So the Catch2 unit test framework is um, C++ based, but we can also uh, test uh, C code uh, using this. And I've just got two test cases, very simple uh, unit test harness here I'm letting Catch generate the main for us as well and um, I've got some require type assertions in one of my test cases here. So what we're going to do is use LDRA in order to generate code coverage on these tests and we're plugging into a GCC based environment on a, a Windows machine so that's the MinGW compiler and Later on, what I'll do is I'll switch to a uh, Linux environment and perform similar steps uh, to show you the, the cross-platform capability here. Let's uh, just make sure that we can run our tests. So uh, first thing, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll run a clean here. And then I'll run a build of my test suite. And then I can run my test suite, which is all good. Everything passes. And I'm also getting some output here based on the toggling of my tests, which is quite nice, which is the debug version of the code. And um, what I'm going to do now is just show you the, the general workflow. So let's take a look at the directory here. So first things first, we're going to import the source code to LDRA automatically. Then we're going to perform some static analysis for the tool in order to perform the instrumentation step. So this is where we're going to generate an instrumented version of the code, which has some pro points in there on the original source code. And that should uh, give us some data that's coming out uh, uh, in order to be analyzed by the coverage engine. So let's perform these processes. Uh, so after the instrumentation, then uh, you can basically rebuild uh, the test suite or just rebuild the original code if that's what's required. And then uh, again, you can execute the te test suite in, in exactly the same way that we did um, uh, without the instrumentation. And then we can analyze the coverage. Okay, so um, let's uh, do the first stage here. So uh, the build import stage basically reads uh, that original build process, uh, which is just building the original system, not the unit test suite. So I want results on the whole source code, um, not just what's under test here, the Blinky and the error.c. And um, uh, that should give enough information for the tool in order to perform the static analysis phase. So this is a, just a necessary prerequisite phase in order to perform uh, the instrumentation step here. So next stage is the instrumentation phase. And we'll take a look at the output of, of what this is. So this isn't really um, uh, all, all too magic. All this is, is is generating an instrumented version of the program here. So um, let's take a look at the source directory. Uh, we've got our original blinky.c source code. The main function here being blinky update, which is sort of a state machine type thing. And then we've also got our instrumented version of the uh, source code here, which is generated by the, the, the LDRA tool. So next stage is we want to rebuild the unit test harness with the instrumented version of the code. So let's perform this step.
And the way that I've integrated this phase is you can see here on the command line build report that I've just switched the build process to use the instrumented version of the code instead of the original. And that's one way of integrating the, the instrumented code into the build. Next phase, let's um, run Blinky test suite. So same log that we get before, but interestingly, now we've got some output here. So this .exh file is the output that's coming back from the coverage engine. And you, this is text readable here. This is simply just a list of uh, probe hits that LDRA can then read and translate into code coverage data. So now let's uh, bring that data back into the tool and generate some coverage reports here. And we'll notice that the EXH data has, uh, has disappeared. That's been uh, backed up inside the tool somewhere. So let's take a look at our code coverage reports. And this should be back where we started from here. So I'm just using Firefox as a browser here, launching into the HTML reports. And let's go to the dynamic overview report. And this is where we can see we've got statement, branch coverage, and also MCDC coverage. There's another column here called LCSA J coverage. And that's otherwise known as path coverage. Let's take a look at Blinky update to see which uh, statements we're missing here. And we can see that we've not created a test that will go through the default statement here. We've just toggled between these two states, the, the off state and the on state. OK, so now let's switch over to uh, a, a Linux box. And I can run exactly the same uh, test suite here, the catch2 test suite. It's exactly the same code. I've just uh, checked it out from subversion. And um, uh, you can very easily build up um, a very similar build process here. So I've got a build.sh. I've got a clean.sh. And I've also uh, basically compiled all these steps into one bash script here. So uh, you can run the build import step on the command line here, which will re-import the tools. But instead, it will use the Linux build process instead of the Windows one. Then you can uh, perform that same process with the LDRA engine on the command line to get to the instrumentation step. Then you can rebuild with the instrumented code. Then you can execute the test suite. And then you can get the um, coverage data. You can analyze that coverage data in the same way. Uh, interesting one here, I, what I've done is I've labeled the data set with a timestamp, which can be quite useful for reporting purposes. And then we can generate the HTML reports as well after this. So uh, let's just give this a, a, a quick run, see what happens. And then let's launch our report. And we can see here that we've got exactly the same results that we had on the Windows box. And that makes sense because we've run exactly the same catch two test suite. OK, thank you very much for watching. If you'd like any other information, please get in touch with LDRA via these channels.